Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, whether, whether you are an actual mother or whether you step in as a mother, we thank you for all you do. Not that we don't thank you every day, but this is the day that we set aside to thank you. We love you. And for those of you who've lost their mother, who've lost your mother today and are grieving because you don't have your mother or mother figure in your life, or you've never had that, I'm so sorry and I'm praying for you. Um, I pray that God, if he hasn't filled uh, that void with a woman in your life, I pray that he'll fill it, and I pray that he'll send a mother figure to you to fill it if you've lost your mother or have never had a mother figure in your life. Um, today, the serm um, my sermon is called Separation Anxiety. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're what you've done and what you're about to do. Father, fill me with your spirit. Endow me with your power, Lord. Let me, let me, let me through you. Let me, let, let me speak what you would have me speak through your word, Lord Jesus, as we um, talk a bit about the book of Ruth today, and Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you will speak to us and say something different to each of us at the same time. Go right into our situations, Lord God, and take over. Let your power just take over my mouth. Speak to me, speak through me, in Jesus' name, amen. Hi guys, a few weeks ago when I was in the recovery center, um, recovering from COVID, I was watching um, uh, my pastor preach um, a sermon called, um, he was preaching a, a series of sermons on the book of Ruth. And I love the book of Ruth. I, I go through it every year and uh, um, uh, his sermon was called Blown Away and he was talking about how Ruth uh, uh, was separating the chaff and how she was blown away at what God was God was doing and how she didn't expect it. And as I was, and he was talking about um, kind of expectation and how God can blow, how God can separate the wheat from the from the chaff, and how and how um, he has unexpected things coming. And as I was sit, sitting watching the sermon, um, I was thinking, uh, yes, that's all well and good to say I'm separate. God is se separating me in. It, it's all wonderful. But I, I was thinking about sometimes separating, although it's good, God has separated you, God has called you out into darkness, out of darkness into marvelous light, um, sometimes there could be anxiety when it comes to that separation, and I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. I always thought of being separated from God as a good thing. But yes, you're right. There could be anxiety when you're being separated. Because 
sometimes separation, although it's a good thing, most times, sometimes separating from what you know can make you very anxious. Like, sometimes, sometimes, uh, although what you know is not helping you, sometimes what you know is not serving you anymore, but sometimes to be separate from it is, um, it's hard, it's lonely, it's kind of terrifying, because sometimes it's more comfortable to stay where you are, because you know everything about where you are, you know what you're going to do, you know what you're going to uh, eat, you know what you're going to, uh, you know what your daily activities is going to be. But you know, sometimes where you, to step out from that, there's anxiety that goes with every decision to step out. And we often talk about the wonderful things that can happen if you step out of the boat. But nobody talks about the anxiety and other, and other fear of stepping out. And I think that's and that's what I want to delve in today. When we talk about separation anxiety, it, it reminds me of little children. And forgive me for not looking this up, but um, it is a real condition uh, with little children and their parents uh, where the child feels anxious and feels very afraid when they're um, with when they are separated from their parents. Uh, I especially have heard of this when it's the child's first day of school or sometimes first day uh, away from their parents where they just don't want to uh, let go of their parents' hand or they cry or they scream because when you step into something new, it's, it's wonderful, it is, but it is also terrifying. And yes, the Lord will be with you, but it's, oh, but it's so scary. And the Lord wants me to say that he understands that it's scary. He understands that it's not easy taking that new job. He understands that it's not easy becoming a parent. He understands that you're afraid of uh, getting hurt again or dating and it not work out. He understands that you're apprehensive about whatever stage you you are at, but he first wants me to tell you it's okay to be, to have some fear about it, fear about whatever. It's totally normal, it's totally natural, it's a human thing. The problem comes is when you live in the fear. See, it's okay to be uh, anxious or it's okay to feel some fear, some, oh, I don't know, or some trepidation. But the problem comes when you live in the fear and you cause your fear to, to be a blocker to what the Lord wants to do. Fear, fear should be a propeller, not a blocker. See, when you feel fear, you shouldn't let it block you from whatever it is. But 
it's meant to be a propel propeller. I wrote a book uh, about four years ago that that said fear um, so, um, sometimes fear is good. I I'll have to read the quote for you. I'll, I'll put that in another video. It was so good the quote about fear the Lord gave it to me as I was writing. Uh, I think um, when you step out into something new, there's supposed to be some anxiety about it. Whatever it is, whether it's having your first child, going on your first date, uh, getting married, getting a new job, starting a church, whatever it is, you're meant to feel that. You're, you're supposed to feel ambivalent. You're supposed to feel like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter how much research you do and how much you've counted the cost and done, and done, and have done that. And it's very important when you're stepping into something, especially a job, to do your research on the company to find uh, to learn to go to school to uh, do do all your checks and balances but even with that your fear is natural feel it but but don't live there let it be as a propeller a propeller to uh, propel you to your destiny. Don't let it be a blocker to block you from it. Because on the other side of fear, you'll find a new level of faith. On the other side of fear, if you push through the fear, you, you will find a new level of faith. Uh, when I um, was going through COVID and I was so afraid, um, I was really afraid of like, oh Lord, am I going to die? Is this going to be the end for me? But in all of that, all, everything I went through with COVID, I found now that I have a new level of faith. That God is for me. He is not against me. I can I can do this. I can live my life. So all my fear on the other side of it, on the other side of COVID, gave me a new level of faith. And all I have to say to, to you today is push through the fear. Sometimes fear is there for a wonderful reason. You're not to push through. But majority of the times push through the fear because you'll find another, a deeper level of faith. Not because I didn't have uh, faith before COVID, but now it's deeper because fear gives you a testimony. And that's what it did for me. Um, and it gave me deeper faith. And yes, uh, separation can and will cause anxiety. But don't let it, don't let the anxiety um, stop you. Feel it when you do. Um, make the proper preparation so that you know what you're doing. Research, read, and talk to people. But don't, but do it. Do it. You know you see it. You know you see whatever God has in you to do. And don't let fear stop you or your lack of faith, like, will this work out, stop you. Because if it doesn't work out this time, it will work out.
sometime. So, and it may work out in a different way. You may start out wanting to do something, but it may work out that you are doing something else. For example, when, before I started on YouTube, I desperately wanted to just be involved in ministry. I didn't care what ministry. I tried out for everything. But everything was closed door, closed door, closed door. Everyone was like, no, no, no. We can't do this. Uh, you can't do this. I'm sorry, we don't need you here. Um, so, but I had so much to say. And I was so broken, and I believed the Lord was truly speaking to me about what he wanted me to say or do. or Like, I believe the word was just bubbling up in me. And preachers will say, say this, sometimes the word is just bubbling up in you and you have to speak. You have to speak because you have to get it out. You have to tell people what the Lord is showing you. So, I had no pulpit. Nobody would actually give me a chance. So, I turned to YouTube. Because it was um, the only thing I could do. It was, was free. I was... 27 and broke and I didn't have a way to start a church or get a pulpit so um, the only thing I could do to put out what God had put in me for the world was YouTube and that's what I did and that's what I've been doing for 11, for 11 years now up, down, good, bad. I, I've been here for 11 years preaching and teaching and different videos and different different uh, ways of doing things. Sometimes using music, sometimes not. You see, on the... And I was scared to go on YouTube. I was like, Oh, what if nobody watches me, or I'm just a no-name? Uh, what if I just go out there and make an idiot of myself? And the Lord said, so? Like, so what if you make an idiot of yourself? That's how you learn. Like I said, like I always say to people, don't be afraid to, in every idiot, there is a grain of something that you can learn. So, every time you go out there and make an idiot of yourself, there is something in whatever you did to be, to be an idiot of yourself that you can learn from. So, I would say to anyone, don't be afraid because you feel you're going to make an idiot of yourself. Um, because even if you do, that's how you learn. That's that's okay. And we've all made idiots of ourselves at some point. We've all preached bad sermons at some point. We've all done that. We've all made mistakes. We've all... We've all goofed up in our profession. We've all said stuff that we just oh put put our foot in our mouth. We all we've all hurt people unintentionally, and people have hurt us. But don't let that fear or that uh, possibility of looking stupid make you just shy away from it, from whatever 
because we all look stupid. We all have issues. Have issues. We all have insecurities. But don't let that stop you. Know that the person that you are looking at, your boss or whatever, however good they may do their job or whatever, whoever you admire that does the same thing, they have insecurities too. And one the thing I, another thing I want to say, don't let hurt stop you from, from, from doing what you've done. Sometimes it's not the separation anxiety. Sometimes we're afraid of getting hurt if we step out. We're afraid that, that, that people will not like us. We're afraid that um, we are not good enough. We're afraid that, um, that what we have is not enough. But what we have is enough for what we need. I believe God gives us all exactly what we need to do what he's called us to do. We are not lacking. We just think we are. And we are not uh, just helpless sinners or whatever. We are strong people. Yes, we do have issues, but everyone has issues. I have issues. Whoever your pastor is has, has issues. Your mom has issues. Your dad has issues. Everyone has issues. And we're all working through something. So don't let whatever your issues are stop you. Um, I think, I think we, because we are with ourselves constantly, we tend to think our issues are the worst thing ever, like, oh, I struggle with this, so, oh, I'm too that, and I'm not saying that you should work and get healed and get better, but don't marinate in your issues to the point where you let that stop you, like, you're like, I can't do this, I can't do that. Listen, brother, sister, you can do whatever God has called you to do. You know why you can't do, do what you think you should do? Because you don't need to do what you think you should do. All you need to do is what you have in front of you already. Like, I would, I will never be able to go into space. Like, because I don't want to go into space. If I was, if I had a disability and was interested in, like, becoming an astronaut, God would put the desire in me to, uh, Invent, invent, invent um, a way to go into space, but I am not interested. I'm not interested in going into space. Or, I'm not a mathematician. I'm terrible at math, so, uh, so, he hasn't called me to, uh, to solve, uh, math problems, because, he has other people in his in his um, kingdom doing that stuff. Other smart, really smart mathematicians. He doesn't need me. Everyone brings a special gift, even if it's the same field. Everyone bring, brings something slightly different. I was thinking of something weird last night. I was thinking of uh, reading the Bible, and a lot of people say start with Matthew or whatever. I say start with whatever, uh, depending on what kind of person you are, 
Um, start with whatever suits you as a person. For example, me, I'm a rom- I, I love romance, and I love romantic comedies, and I, I love romantic books, and everything like that. So, I started with, uh, Song of Solomon, and I also love wisdom and information. I think it's so helpful. So, I also started with Proverbs. Um, so, it, so, where you start in the Bible depends on who you are. The same way as what gifts you have depends on what God has called you to do. And having anxiety is normal. It's actually healthy. But don't let the anxiety stop you. And even if you're afraid um, while you're doing whatever, it's okay. It's okay um, that you're feeling fear. You have to just push through. Or sometimes uh, the, the, the apprehension may be for a reason. It may be telling you, oh, I need to do more research on this. It, it may be giving you information that you're trying to, that you need to achieve what you need to, to do. It, it may be telling you, oh, I need to go to school before I do this, or I need to uh, take some courses in this. The great thing about the day we live in, now there are courses, there are books, there are programs. If you don't like traditional school, or if it's too hard for you, sometimes you can get online courses to teach you what you need to know, or you, uh, if you're, if you're better at self-teaching, you can find a uh, YouTube videos or something online that you can self-teach, or you can, you can get books on whatever it is. Don't let lack of knowledge stop you. You can get knowledge. You can obtain knowledge if you really want to on, on, on anything. But what you need is the drive and the desire to do whatever God has called you to do. And you have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes to raise those children. You have what it takes to start that business. You have what it takes to write that book, write that song, preach that sermon. And if you if you have to start small, you will start small. Um, and if you look like an idiot for a while, so what? We all done things that we look like an idiot. Don't be afraid of that. That's that's human. Like I said before, looking like an idiot is how you learn and how you um how you grow. And don't be afraid to ask for help. If you know somebody in that field, ask them to give you some tips or maybe some advice on getting that field. Um, like, you know, ask them if you could watch them do what they do. Grill them like you're going crazy. Just ask them up every kind of question that you want about that field. And any decent person would love to talk about what they do and how they do it. Because there's nothing like um, hearing from a person what they do, what they, how they do what they do. 
and it's not it it's not a weakness to ask for help it's actually a strength when you ask for help you're saying i know that i can do i can't do this without help i know that that i I'm not on my own, and somebody else's knowledge will will help me. Um, and ask God to send uh, someone with that knowledge of how how to do what they do. Cause a few weeks ago I said this: when you add what you do to what someone else does, it creates something new. So you do your background research, you find people that are doing what you're wanting to do, and you add it to what you do to create something new. So I don't think a person so much copies what other people do. I don't Every emulation could be part of the process, but really, I think it's finding out what other people do in your field and adding it to what you do to create something truly unique to you. And although separation anxiety or coming out coming out of your comfort zone is normal the Lord saying he will cover you he will be there with you as I was reading Ruth I I began to notice how she was covered at every step whether it be by her mother-in-law and by, or by Boaz. Like, before she even met Boaz, her mother-in-law just showed her what to do along the way. And then even after she met Boaz, her mother-in-law said, do this, do that. Like, her mother-in-law was her mentor. And even with Boaz, she was covered. So, the Lord wants me to tell you, when you feel the fear, before you get to faith, He is covering you. When you are in fear, before you get to faith, and even after, He is covering you. You are not alone. He has the resources and the people you need. Don't worry about it. Separation anxiety, coming out of the boat, feeling anxious when you come out of the boat, feeling anxious when you separate from what's new. It is normal. And even if you're separating from what is, from a bat, from a harmful thing to a good thing, there is some separation anxiety. So let's say if you're an alcoholic, a heavy drinker, although getting clean is healthier for you or, and better for you and, more pro and will cause you to lead a more productive life, sometimes in that production productive life, you will have separation anxiety from alcohol, because it's what you've known sometimes from the, from generation, for generations, and it's not only alcohol or sex, it can be uh, gossip, it can be harmful thinking, it can be all of that, all of that, even though it's from a harmful thing to a productive thing. All of that can cause separation anxiety. Like, when you've thought negative all your life, and 
the Lord wants you to to uh, think more positively, thinking negatively all your life could be um, could cause um, not thinking negatively could cause some will cause some separation anxiety, and you will want to revert back to back to. Uh, thinking ne negatively when things go wrong, but understand he will cover you in everything you do. He will cover you. He'll be there for you. He'll send people. He'll send resources, and you don't. And you you don't need to feel anxious, but you will feel anxious because it's a human thing. I know the Bible says uh, be anxious for nothing, but if but in everything through prayer and petition make your request known to God. Yes, that is true. That is the ideal, but the Lord knows we will feel fear, we will be anxious, but in that we push forward on the other side of fear is a greater faith, like I said before, is a greater level of faith, and he wants us to, em to embrace the fear. Uh, quite often, the scriptures talk in ideals, like, ideally, we're supposed to feel like this. And ideally, we're supposed to do this. But the Lord also understands, too, that it is a process. And he respects your process. Your process is different than my process. And my process is different than your process. And let nobody put down their process. Like, some people have more faith than others because... The, of what the Lord is doing in their lives and what He's about to do in their lives. And, like, let nobody put you down because you are not there. Oh, you should have more faith. The Bible says this. Yes, the Bible says that. But the Bible, although it's key to our faith, and although it's a mirror, and the window, it speaks in ideals. And it speaks to where we are, too. But sometimes we can take the, the ideal of the scripture and make people feel bad about where they are. Oh, they should have more faith, or they should be doing this, or they shouldn't be doing that. They shouldn't think like that. Listen, brother, sister, we're all in a process together. We're all dealing with things together. We're all in different situations. We all have different personalities, different challenges. And the Lord understands that. Not that we should stay in our mess. We should endeavor to get better and better every day. But we need to understand that it's all a process. So guys, thank you so much for being with me for separation anxiety. I hope I hope that helps. Thank you so much for joining me.